children of all ages, direct from New York, Mr. Tiny Tim. It is significant that I had the thrill of the first time anywhere to do this marathon medley in Luna Park on January 12th, 1979. Unfortunately, there was also a tragedy here at Luna Park a few months later. Standards feared the death toll could rise to as high as seven in that tragic blaze at Luna Park tonight. It's unknown how many people are actually dead in there at the moment. But we do know that up to 11 cars were trapped in the ghost train. When Mr. Godson and all his family perished, with the exception of his wife. I was from the country. I came down here to share a, a night with my family. And my whole world just sort of fell to pieces. <laughs> The tiptoe through the tulips troubadour. I'm Ross Martin. Miss Vicky is gone, and so are the big crowds. But today, Tiny tells us why he'll never say ta ta to the theater. Life is a masquerade party, and we all have our own masks to wear. Hi, how are you, Tiny? Can you hear me? Oh, oh yes, Mr. Lane. Okay. Oh, I, I want to say I want to say hello to you and everyone in beautiful Australia. Thank you. You're on 23rd Street and Park Avenue right now, is that right? Uh, tw uh, 23rd near Park. Right. And what is that you're carrying in your hand there, Tiny? Well, it's my little shopping bag and the ukulele. Oh, right. <laughs> Listen, I, I want to I ask you, now that I'm looking at it, about that outfit you've got on. What does that all say on there? I can... Well, uh, this is a, uh, a comic strip uh, outfit which was done for me uh, in accordance with Mr. Martin Sharp who produced my film. Well, it's really going to be a portrait of Tiny. The, the, the basis of it is the world non-stop singing record we did at Luna Park in January. We've got the Dipper, we've got Dodgem, there's the Rota and the Cave. We've got Fear and Slides and Bases, and our chips get all raves. For entertainment value, you just can't beat Luna Park. When they ask us why we open, we answer just for life. <laughs> when did you first become involved with Luna Park? Uh, 1973, invited to redo the face and then started to get very involved with the place. Yeah. That says Mr. Tim, with Mr. Sharp's encouragement, is trying to set a professional world non-stop singing record. That's true. Uh, yesterday, the heavyweight contender was his old self hamming it up in a room. Well, not really hamming it. Hi. Oh, thanks for the wonderful write-up. Uh, oh, any questions you want to ask is okay. Have you been training this morning? No. Uh, I've been training for the last eight years. You are my harbor of love, dear. Though, I don't forget the word. Though you're afar, your love lingers on. Oh, wait, I know the one. Charles Harrison recorded in 1917 called Love's Ship. Oh, wonderful ship of my golden dreams from the heart. But 
this marathon, the purpose of it, really, is maybe for some uh, athletic justification. <laughs> I can't play tennis. <laughs> I, I certainly can't run, <laughs> unless I saw a mouse. Little love ship, sail back. Sail back into port. Sail back with your treasures untold. For my heart is the harbor, and you are the ship, and your wonderful love is the goal. The goal will be at least to go straight for two hours without a stop. You know my motto, safety first. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they change it, free, free admission. <laughs> and then if I didn't get anybody, you know it's a sad thing. Also, I hear there's going to be a mystery guest there. Well, it's not really a mystery. You all know her, and you all love her. The wonderful Miss Jeannie Lewis. We are now going to the Palais. Today is January 12th. It might have been around this time that this whole medley started. Uh, by accident, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It all started by accident back in 1970 in the, the Shoreham Hotel in Washington. Well, I didn't know what I was doing while I was on the stage. An Art Linkletter uh, was there that night with his wife, and I couldn't stand the show I was doing, and I started to sing without stopping. To save face. And <laughs> apparently that helped. <laughs> and I continued to develop this through the years at the Isle of Wight in England, months later, in the same year, 1970, in August. Uh, I was out there with the late Jimi Hendrix, I had to follow Joni Mitchell. I don't think there's anyone in the world today singing through this horn. It brings back sounds in an acoustical-like way. Numbers we all remember. Mr. Stone and the piano. There'll always be an England While there's a country lane Wherever there's a cottage small Besides a field of grain in beautiful Sydney, Australia, at Luna Park. Thank you. Never go 
before has the world of show business seen such an amazing show within a show, there's no delay, so step right up and be transported to another world. As you'll see yourself as others see you, as the reflection is good for you, well, there's millions of reflections on the inside. It's the show they're all talking about, the show they're all seeing, not one show, but three. I sit here in my mirror, and the mirror is a reflection of the past. I think of how wonderful you've been for nine years. A man who didn't have to do all this, backing me up when I didn't have a cent. And even though I owe you a lot, still you've been faithful to me. Right, thank you, Daddy. And tonight, tonight is a big concert. Yes. And we are here, as you all know, to celebrate the centenary of recorded sound. In 1878, Thomas Alva Edison invented the phonograph, and the world has been swinging ever since. And just before I go on, another puff from Elizabeth Arden. And for all the great cosmeticians of the world, to remember, if you haven't got a face, they can all give you one. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, gals and goats. Welcome to the setting of the world non-stop professional singing record. Would you welcome to the stage America's ambassador of song, the eternal troubadour, the human lyrebird, the superman of song, Mr. Tiny Tim! <laughs> Someone who swept right off your heels. Goody good, you met someone and I know how it feels. Goody good, you gave them your heart too, like I gave mine to you. You broke it in little pieces, and now how do you do? You lie awake just sipping the blues all night. Goody good, you think that love's a barrel of dynamite. Hooray and hallelujah, you had it coming to you. Goody good for him, goody good for me. I hope you're satisfied the rascals you. It's a good day for singing a song, and it's a good day for moving along. Yes, it's a good day. How can anything go wrong? A good day from morning till night. Yes, it's a good day for shining your shoes, and it's a good day for losing the blues. Everything's a game and nothing to lose. It's a good day from morning till night. I say the sun. Good morning, sun. What rise and shine today? You know you gotta get going if you wanna make the showing, and you know you got to ride away. Cause it's a good day for paying your bills, and it's a good day for curing your ills. Take a deep breath and throw in them pills. It's a good day from morning till night. It's a good day from morning till night. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. No, no, no. Don't go strolling down lover's lane with anyone else but me. Till I come marching home. Why, you know I love you. And don't you love me too? Oh, baby, this is why I say to you. Oh, don't sit 
on the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Oh, don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me till I come marching home. I never cared much for moon skies. Never saw raindrops in my eyes. Now that your lips are close to mine, I'm beginning to see the light. Never went in for land and jelly. Never saw raindrops in my eyes. Now that your lips are close to mine, I'm beginning to see the light. You used to ramble through the park, shadow boxing in the dark. Then you came and talked about God's call on fire. Now what? Poppy, you were the um, original spirit here at Luna Park. You came up from Adelaide and you started this place here, what, in 35? And you've seen a whole development of Luna Park over the years. That so is, that, yeah, that is correct. That is so. <laughs> Practicing wasn't playing anything. Well, whatever it was, it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wasn't it by myself, you and then your father? This is this is the cover of the second album. Is the second? I think yeah, it's the first. No, the second. Second. <laughs> the second album, my dear. You want to take this? Yes, I do. I want to know all about you. <laughs> you want to sit down? No. You want me to sit? I could stay. No, I should hold the pictures. You want to sit, sit down? Sit down. This is surely, this is surely right. <laughs> oh, I know you had uh, quite a few names before you settled on Tiny Tim, which has been your lucky name. Larry Love was one of them. What were some of the others? Uh, uh, Emmett Swing, Vernon Castle. And Julius K. Fox Glove. Julius K. Fox Glove. Judas. <laughs> Judas. Uh, <laughs> to, um, and then uh, some agent named me Sir Timothy Tim. However, uh, he cut it down to Tiny Tim. Maybe he thought that uh, I was a friend of Bob Cratchit's. <laughs> you know, or maybe he was a fan of Dickens. <laughs> and how did little Tim behave? Asked Mrs. Cratchit when Bob had hugged his daughter to his heart's content. Oh, as good as go, said Bob, and better. Somehow, he gets thoughtful sitting by himself so much and thinks the strangest things you ever heard. He told me, coming home, that he hoped the people saw him in the church because he was a cripple, and it might be pleasant to them to remember upon Christmas Day who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Before Christ I proclaim the glad story If I seek for his sheep gone astray I am sure he will show me his glory when I'm gone the last mile of the way. Listen to my song, a lonely tomb, Madame. 
Elizabeth Taylor's play. Oh, yeah, right. And there was a mob waiting right. for her. Oh, yeah, but I remember her when she was 15. That's when I met her. In 1947, September 17th. Uh, that was at the St. Regis Hotel. On the, uh, I, I, know, I forgot the floor. It might have been the 10th floor, I don't know. And she was so beautiful then. Tell me. Where are the people? Right here. Right here. I'm going to ride and we're going to show you. Yo, you know the scale? Yo, this is Himalaya. Number one in Coney Island. The only ride. Well, look, a new record's here. That's wonderful. Well, look at that new little disc they invented. Sony and North American Phillips yesterday revealed plans for a serial system that could revolutionize the recording industry by use of advanced computer and laser technology. Oh. The system which marks the first departure from the recording methods invented by Thomas Edison. From the stick to the phonograph to the needle to the cylinder to this situation, we're really outpacing ourselves and going fast. I mean, the world always wants something new. The world always creates. The, the world keeps on going with, with new inventions to better the livelihood of man. It's a fantastic race between the inner forces and outer forces of man and the divine power of the great Jehovah God, Yahweh. What a show, what a fight. Yes, we really hit our target for tonight. How we sing as we limp through the air. Look below, there's our field over there. With our full crew aboard and our trust in the Lord coming in on a wing and a prayer. All of you out there in the world, outside of Australia, who don't know where Brisbane is, let me tell you, it's a great place. They have a great beer called Forex, but that's not what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about one of the greatest talents that I've seen in nine years. Coming out tonight, Miss Natasha. When you see this young woman on the stage, if your mouth doesn't open, then you're ashamed of your cavities. Because this is one of the greatest acts that I've ever seen. She can't judge a book by its cover He's got the face of an angel But there's a devil in his eye He's such a delicate thing When he starts to squeeze You'd be surprised He's not so good to start At the end of the week Oh, you'd be surprised By on a streetcar or in a train You'd think he was born without any brains But in a Morris chair, oh brother You'd be surprised. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Maybe I'll just get comfortable. Even, even the beer is anxious to get out. <laughs> we have to get Miss Amy. How do you like my costume? Oh, wonderful. I hope we didn't get any forced a lot of beer on us. Oh, just a little. You can rub it off if you wish. <laughs> oh, I tell you. <laughs> The way I'm going these days, I love to drink it off. <laughs> he was a very good child. He never cried. So keep on looking for the bluebird and listening for his song. Whenever April showers come along, listen to my song.
Tim? Please take a seat. I love it. We're talking to Tiny Tim right here on the Coffee Express, WMMM. And, um... Are you proud of your son? Why shouldn't I be proud of him? Thank you so much, my dear friends. And what a thrill it is to be here today at beautiful Rose Hill Racing Park. I'm only going to dedicate this song to all the wonderful mothers here and everywhere, your mother and mine, but also to the beautiful Mrs. Alex here. And this one of the million things she has. facade for years. Uh, the shopping bag, the bow tie, the jacket, the hair, the nose you were born with, I don't know. That, that's something we, we don't have to get into. Uh, the nose, it was beautiful. It didn't ever know, but it fell once, the carriage. Oh, did I? Yeah, I suppose. I wanted to fix the nose, too. You wouldn't let me, like I fix your teeth. <laughs> Cost me $1,000. Yeah. You had yeah. folks for a picture. But now watch. A transformation. And I've only been using this for a week. Oh, man, people have said to me how young I look already. Well, I'm afraid it's a lot for that. It doesn't like it looking young. You see, you see the white that walks in there. You see this? Right like that? Oh, the difference already. And soon I shall be putting this cream on like this. The youth, you are coming back. We use it for a moment. Well, I'll always be 19 in spirits. That's why my name at the hotel is Dorian Gray. Uh, that's my other name at the hotel. Uh, and also on my OTB telephone betting card, uh, which, uh, which I happen to have um, lost. Oh, because I was held up by two women in New York 
and they sort of took away everything. And uh, well, uh, at what gunpoint or what? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I must say I was attacked by them, <laughs> and I was very weak, and I submitted. So after that happened, right in the streets. You know, uh, I, they then took my wallet. Swanee, how I love you, how I love you, my dear old Swanee. That means the world to me. Among the folks at the D.I.S., I even know my family's waiting for me, praying for me, down by the Swanee. The folks of North will see me no more when I get to the Swanee shore. Swanee. with the junior high. No, she said junior high. <laughs> this is his friend, the middle friend. My cousin. Oh, he's My cousin. My dear cousin, yeah. Hal Stein, who is now the promotion manager of WKTU. FM. He took a better position than you. Oh, the 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 We've lost ourselves. We've lost the track. <laughs> Where is he? He's got an arrow. He goes. <laughs> this way. This way. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by wire. My honey, you know my heart's on fire. And honey, when you are lonely and want me only, honey, just telephone. Oh. Yeah. Hello there. There's a new star here from the Melody Burlesque. Her name is Pleasure Ames. <laughs> well, say hello. Well, she's gonna say hello to you. She's gonna say hello to you. Hello? Where's my glass? Who is this? Mr. Nolan. Frank Nolan, this is Pleasure Ames. He says my name sounds very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had that much publicity yet. Oh, this, this may be the killer. We all are drink champagne Here, tonight. Just a second, or somebody else wants to speak to you. Do this. Where can the guy for me and my gal? The parson's way for me and my gal. Build a little home for two, for three, or four, or more. In love, love, for me and my gal. December 17, 1969. A day that will long be remembered in the annals of showbiz matrimony. As millions watch around the nation, Tiny Tim married Miss Vicky on television. It is the culmination of Tiny's spectacular rise to fame. I told Miss Vicky exactly the way I was, that I didn't believe in birth control or in rhythm or in SEX except for blessed events. I didn't want to put a burden on her. She didn't have to marry me. That I was very difficult to live with. She didn't have to marry me. I got down on my knees and I prayed right in front of her. If you want fame or glory, you don't have to go down the aisle with me. But if you do, this is the way it's going to be. I want a girl just like the girl I married in Rosa. She was a pearl, I'm the only girl that daddy ever had. A poor old-fashioned girl with heart so true, one who loved nobody else but you. I want a girl just like the girl I married. as these are. The marriage ceremony with Miss Vicky. Right. Oh, well, they want to see it. This is right on the Tonight Show with Miss Vicky here, and afterwards the reception at uh, Manny's ground floor on 52nd Street. Yeah, and this should be noted where all the gifts were stolen. A lot of shoes, a lot of rice.
In that the unauthorised biography, right. you spoke freely about your SWDSs. Right. Flying into Miss Vicky after only one half or two seconds, and you thought perhaps well, Miss, Miss Vicky sometimes wasn't pleased with this. Absolutely right. Does yeah. this include four play? Two seconds? <laughs> no, no, no. No, it doesn't. Whether it's two seconds or two minutes or two hours, the final result is for the procreation of blessed events for the glory of God's blessing. And baby clothes, he's so ambitious. Why, the poor man even so. When it was done right, no matter what she understood or didn't, um, or didn't want, personally here, it was a great blessing. It was a great, great satisfaction because he was happy. Now, she was not. She says, darling, you happy after two seconds? <laughs> I said, my dear, you have no conception of what he wants. And Miss Tulip was born 24 minutes like that, which I believe was a blessing from his grace. Believe me, I'm in love with you, honey. Say you love me too, honey. No one else will do, honey. Seems funny, but it's true. Loved you from the start, honey. Bless your little heart, honey. the night that I pass by her window. I saw the flickering shadows of love on her blind. She was my woman. As she deceived me, I watched her went out of my mind. I'm sorry that I couldn't make her happy. Uh, because, you know... I wonder who's kissing her now. Searching for happiness, I found it once and tossed it aside. I paid for it with hours of loneliness. I've nothing to hide. I'd bury my pride for just one more chance. To prove it's you alone I care for. Each night I say a little prayer for just one more chance. Just one more night. To taste the kisses that enchant me. I would want no others if you'd grant me just one more chance. One day, long one, she'll be back. Uh, it's, it's a when challenge. When she comes knocking, mm -hmm. would you take her straight back or would you? Absolutely. Have? But the only thing I would want her to do is to see a doctor who doesn't have VD. Because, <laughs> because that shocking disease is spreading throughout this world. Oh, who are you? And you, my wonderful queen, and you recall when love was all, and we were seven. She's far apart. I married her till death do us part. She can marry tomorrow. I'm still married to her. If I marry someone else, if I marry someone else, 
She is still married to me originally until she dies. I'm just living in sin, praying for God's mercies. I long to hold you near and kiss you just once more. But you were on the ship. You know, start on. Carefully draw I'd rather have a supporting role, you know. Sounds one of six. Vampire roles. Yeah. Or even kitty roles, uh, you know, going in a land with Mickey Mouse. for me? Oh, well, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, thank you anyway. Goodbye. Hmm. My next choice is Hanna-Barbera. But I just completed my first horror movie, full-length movie, called Blood Harvest. And that is really a, a restricted horror movie where I play a mad, insane clown. Uh, uh, Well, listen. Well, let me tell you something about the telephone. Thomas Edison invented the telephone. Now, now, listen. let me tell you. Alexander Graham Bell. Is that right? It's all over with Miss Vicky, is it? All right, let me explain that. Uh, she got married again back in 79. Mm. She, I never gave her a divorce. She got her divorce because the state gave it to her after the time limit. And you're right, Mr. Dorn, I said, I said I would never marry again, but I also said in my interviews, I also said I would rather marry than sleep with someone. Tony, when you and your former wife, Miss Vicky, separated, she made a few statements to American newspapers about uh, SEX. Do you have anything to say about that? I just met a reverend uh, going through the passport office. You know, with his wife from Arizona. And he said, Well, how come we don't belong to, you know, what organization do you belong to? I said, Well, my mother's Jewish, my father's Catholic, I just believe in Jesus Christ, come back here. You know, and I met somebody in Los Angeles from the Harry Krishna movement. <laughs> and she agrees with me. <laughs> you know, and he called SEX uh, a illusion. <laughs> Have you ever shattered this illusion? Uh, no, I think he's right.
love sex. You're one of the most honest women I've ever met. Really? Yes, yeah, you are. Yeah, a lot of women don't admit to liking sex, a but... A lot? 99.9 and three quarters. Believe me, my diaries are filled mm -hmm. with those names. Just a gigolo, everywhere I go, people know the part I play. Paid for every dance, selling each romance, every night some heart betraying. There will come a day, youth will pass away, then what will they say about me? When the end comes, I know, they'll say just a gigolo, as life goes on without me all. Jesus Christ is my Lord on both sides. He's been wonderful. I thank Jesus for everything. For protection on, on, on us all. Also, there's also another rough, wonderful room here. Many memories of these sweet princes I've been dreaming of. These lovely angels of light. Here is a, here is a trophy right here that I never gave to a young woman because I felt that she almost missed being a classic. So it stays here as one of the only trophies I took back. Made but never gave. But she's still wonderful, of course. Just misses out by an inch. And of course, over here, I gave 13 trophies out uh, from 63 to 69 with Miss Vicky. And of course, in this desk here, there were many, many memories. There's nothing here now, but God, I give the world to see that old gang of mine. I used to love that old quartet that sang sweet Anna. Over here is the curveball field where I played ball from that curb over there in the other corner of 163rd in Fort Washington, right over here to this side. We used to run the bases. Many times they left me out of the game and how I tried to hit home runs from that side to this side over here. And although I failed, I never quit. One day, I still never hit the wall, but I'm trying to bring friends back here so I can play one more eternal game where I can hit that wall from the other side. However, it was wonderful to keep on playing and never quitting. That's the essence of life. Never quit, no matter, even if you lose. That's the way I look at it. That's why I play all the lotto games every week, hoping for six wonderful numbers to come in, hoping for a telephone to say, lotto calling, I tell you, there's nothing like pursuing, pursuing in life and never giving up. To illustrate my last remark, Jonah in the whale, Noah in the ark, what did they do? Just when everything looks so dark, man, they said you better act, said you ain't the positive healing, and ain't the negative latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, there's no in between. I have taken care of you from the day you were born, you don't know where you were. The day you died, I don't know where you're going to. My law is this be fruitful or multiply, period. And here's a picture of Jackie Robinson, who I admired immensely uh, when he first came to the Dodgers. What a great player. May he rest in peace. Yeah, you Mr. Mr. the money for you. Who's this? Oh, well. Mr. Ray wants a million, million dollars for you. Well, that's the way life goes. I mean, what is his name? Life comes and life goes. The way I can look at it now, however, this is a great, wonderful room. And many wonderful things in prayer happened here. Incidentally, if you should run into a shower, just step inside my cottage door and meet my million dollar baby from the five and ten cent store. Love comes along like a popular song, anytime or anywhere at all. Rain or sunshine, spring or Say you never know when it may say hello in a very unexpected place. For example, take my case.
I said, oh, Lord, in my human form, that's the way I am. But, oh, blessed Jesus, just help me. And he has, to a great understanding. Once you find that great gift, you never want to let it go. Uh, but it has to come to you. And most of the time, most of the time, it comes through suffering. When the body is completely down, when the soul is completely down, that's when he knocks on the door. When all the world is a hopeless jumble And the raindrops tumble all around Heaven opens a magic lane When all the clouds darken up the skyway There's a rainbow highway to be found Leading from your window pane To a place beyond the sun Just a step beyond the rain Tell the difference between good or evil. And the truth. I mean, what would you judge it by? By number one, I would, uh, according to God's word in the scriptures, that He left His word. Uh, now, for instance, if someone tells me uh, it's perfectly normal to fool around before marriage, I just have to check chapter six of of uh, the, one, the first book of Corinthians, and St. Paul said it's not right to flee fornication. If I do fall to sin before marriage, I've made a mistake and I try not to do it again. But it's certainly not right because the scripture contradicts the world. And, and, and uh, now, but it's... He says only a fool makes the same mistake twice. Well, I don't want to... He allows one. <laughs> in, 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 in a human sense, we all make errors. As a human being, I can commit a sin tomorrow. I have to suffer the consequences, but pray never to do it again. That's what King David did. Really? Uh, I hear you've got a, a magic bag full of tricks. My sweet agent has forbidden me... Has forbidden you? ...to discuss anything at this particular point of life. Well, this is a <laughs> very important subject for us to dwell on, don't you think? Well, it could be a mighty important subject for anyone to dwell on. It's the S-E-X cannot be used except for the glory of God's name and creating life. That's one of the first things, but... Uh, I think that sexual fantasies of human beings and those that they carry out are very important to their life. Here's what's happening. A full government investigation is being held into last night's near disaster on the Big Dipper at Luna Park. Many of the injured children were just ending their third ride on the Dipper when the leading car jammed about 30 metres from the finish. The second car then rammed the first car, spilling crying and screaming children all over the track. Police and five ambulances were on the scene within minutes, fearing the worst had occurred. And it was just a big mess, you know, there was just blood everywhere and it just it wasn't funny at all. I thought it was a dream, but, but it wasn't. For 43 years, Luna Park has been here and we've never had an accident before and we're very upset that it came at this late stage. Um, and we'll be obviously doing everything we can to make sure it doesn't happen again. Because of birth control, more women have hysterectomies uh, and more breast cancer and lumps there than any other time in the history of mankind. Because of chemical devices, of satanic wisdom, how better it'll be not to have less advanced. And now look what's going to happen now. I like sex. engaged more than ever today in fornication, illicit, S-E-X, either before marriage, in marriage, adulteries, whatever, that the punishments of God, with the way the men handle these women, and the way they get temperate, but night after night, the violence, the, the pressure on the skin, plus it's also my theory that some of these uh, things that women wear, you know, those BRAs. I love the way these hooks go in. Oh, yeah. Well, now, 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 I can't see too well. Uh, Can you get it? Uh, it's a strange bra. 
Yes, it is a strange it one. It seems to go a different way. Oh. See, it's just what I told you. Can't get it? Can't, I can't. Maybe Mr. Eels can help you. <laughs> or Mr. Mike here. They, uh, they seem to be more agile in the... Agile? <laughs> Oh, this young woman playing with the tape recorder. <laughs> there, I did it. Well, and there you are. You see what I mean? See what you mean? <laughs> if you can't do it yourself, it don't mean a thing. Mm. You like that better? Love it. Mr. Tim, why did you bring me here tonight to film? What did I bring you here? Yeah. Well, you wanted to film. Not me, you. Well, I wanted to, we wanted to film Miss Pleasure Ames and her jokes. What did you expect to film? Nothing else. About those fluffy bad legs. Johnson and Johnson. Now, if you stick color enough to that old seal or makeup, whatever it is, because without that scar, no one knows. They all are fantasizing. I uh, met Miss Natasha when she was uh, dancing up in Brisbane. And frankly, uh, for that type of uh, person, it looked like one of the first things I ever saw. Which and type is that? Then? For what she was doing? No, which type of person is she? Well, I think she wants to be a woman. Uh, I don't think she's a transvestite. I think uh, Miss uh, Natasha was transsexual. Now, the fact is, many people can't understand. That's not important. The fact is, the Lord blessed you with the fantasy to thrill to make them stop for a moment to think and wonder. Oh, the secret of his grace is too much to understand. You stepped out of a dream. You are too wonderful to be what you see. Could there be eyes like yours? Well, you know, everyone's got sort of change. It does take out the, uh, the ability to be fruitful and multiply. Um, the, uh, unfortunately, but as I said before, uh, it is very difficult to, uh, to know why certain things happen in this world. Um, it's a matter of prayer and mercy. And, uh, you know, this world gets even more interesting every day. I... At night, when I take off that mask, I put it on the shelf. I may make the world think I'm merry, but I can't hide the truth for myself. So no matter what happens, I must go on acting, acting, acting. Be a polyarch, oh, la, you've got a new girlfriend in your life. Can you tell us about that? The most beautiful girl I've ever met, the only one, you know, they talk about soul love in songs. This is the soul love. Her name is Miss Dixie. Her husband died in a construction accident years ago. She's 25. She has a five-year-old daughter. She lives in Ohio right now. And uh, if I ever have a hit record again or whatever, this is the one, if she says, if she says yes, I'm going to marry. Don't ever doubt me. Learn more about me. I'm in love, dear, it's true, but with nobody else. <laughs> Honest and truly, it's you, Miss Dixie. Oh, my darling, she only remembers. Forever, Miss Dixie, I'll say it again. I love you and love you and love you and then. I love you and love you all over again. And love you and love you again. I play the part of a lover, and to you my song may have charm. But the one who which my heart is singing to is a million miles from my arms. Uh, well, God, you know, can you imagine her telling me in a letter yesterday and she doubts my sincerity? Uh, How cruel. Oh. All right.
like to Otani and tell her. <laughs> I'll tell you, then she may really want to. And if my girl should lose her charms, the octopus has me in its arms. Life's a play by light or dark and lose. We said you could get married on our show if you want. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it was a wonderful gesture, and I want to thank you all and uh, your, your wonderful staff for doing that. But when I came home, she uh, took it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. She thought I was trying to make her another Miss Vicky, which of course is untrue. Oh, I get so lonely. I get so lonely. I could die. And I felt that Mr. Presley's real reason for committing suicide. I mean, a full law, the law thing, all the crash, everything was, well, I, I should say more than one. But the main important one was the split up from his wife. He didn't know how to keep her. Then he was fooling around with many women. I get so lonely. I get so lonely. The lusts of the flesh bring also the destruction of the spirit. Unless it's uh, caught in time. I get so lonely. But I believe, in my own personal opinion, that he. He, he committed spiritual suicide because his soul went haywire because of not walking with Jesus Christ completely. Uh, he did not have the right spiritual help that he should have had. It's so hard to balance the top. have always been here since the beginning of time. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. Their words sound right. Pleasure. While the world is starving in the world, they go home to a castle at night. Now they may make excuses and say they're doing it all in the name of God. Oh, is that, oh it's a pleasure being here and... What is your name again? Frank Gasson. Mr. Gasson, it's a pleasure being here and seeing these wonderful, wonderful lions and tigers of yours. Very, very glad for you to have me. Oh, I'm scared. I got But it's really nice to you, and uh, I want to thank everyone here at the Reevesby Club in beautiful Australia and this wonderful circus. And I can just uh, say, uh, don't go in the cage tonight, Mother Darling. Or the lions look ferocious and they bite. And when they get their angry fits, they'll tear you all to bits. Oh, don't go in the cage tonight. <laughs> that is perfect. I believe. Money changes at the end. For they are the prostitutes. The day of judgment is going to be an upset. Gabriel will warn you, so early warn you, to see the dawn hit the rain. It's not far away. Hold up your hair and say, there's going to be a great day. I hope uh, you can hear me. What? <laughs> I'm only teasing. Is there anybody there uh, besides yourself? I mean, I know there's a cameraman there, but I mean, any other people? Uh... Yes, there's some, the camera crew is here, and, and some gentlemen are coming to work. And, and it's, uh, it's a mighty lovely day today. Can you, can you drag a New Yorker in there with you? I'd like to say hello to a New Yorker. Look at that car's going to hit you in the back there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, never mind, it may get you anyway. I said, uh, is, there, is there one of the New York gentlemen that you just are passing by pedestrian on the street that you could bring over and let him give a wave to Australia? He won't believe it's Australia anyway. Oh, you mean you want someone brought up over here? Yeah, who's there? Uh, Miss Lane, okay, well, I don't know if they have the nerve to come over, but if someone wants to come over here, uh, here's a gentleman coming over now. Right. Uh, here's a gentleman here. <laughs> e explain to him that this is going to Australia. This is going to Australia uh, uh, by satellite uh, to the Mr. Don Lane show in Melbourne. Yes. And we're on the TV camera right now in Melbourne. It's 9.30 at night over there. 9.30 in the evening. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, over here in Australia. Uh, uh, what is your name, sir? Carlton. This is Mr. Carlton here, and he wants to know how, it, uh, how the weather is in Australia now. Well, the weather is fine. How's Mr. Carlton? <laughs> Uh, so the weather's fine, and he asks how you are. <laughs> oh, I'm fine. Uh, what could is be Mr. better? He, sa he what? says he's fine, and he couldn't be better. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? Oh, he. Yeah. Well, we're all doing fine. <laughs> they heard the breeze in the trees, a singing weird. easy for me to L-O-V-E, and I have a heart of stone. That's from a human nature. But I tell him that, and then he helps me. Now, I used to be prejudiced against many people. And I got down on my knees as soon as I found Jesus Christ. And I said, oh, Lord, help me understand the blacks. And now he's given me great strength in the years for the years gone by. No, I feel like I was prejudiced against Jews, too, despite my mother being a Jew. I wish mean, you shouldn't worry so much about me. She's a wonderful mother, Fraser. She's a wonderful mother, Really? We gotta be together. Very shortly. Very shortly we'll be together. That's the truth. Why don't you tell it to me? What should I tell you? He was a very good child. And I had to leave him when I was when I was eight years old. Because time was bad. He was born in 1932, the first. The time was bad, and I have to leave him, you know. He declined to work. He lost everything, you know. Now. Different times, different periods. How life goes by, I praise the Lord, we can see all these things. Over here, they used to have men who drove the elevators back in the 30s. Now everything is automatic.
I will still say, however, that you'll have to give me from the standpoint of where the Jewish people are concerned. The ones who originally given the, um, the birthmark of the grace of God. That they didn't believe that he wasn't a prophet. They only believed he was not the son of God. True! The stone that the builders rejected became the cornerstone. When they had asked him a question, either he had counteracted with another question, or according to the scriptures, the question was not directly answered, or the thing is, uh, he perhaps might have brought, brought a parable. Or some, sometimes I get the feeling some of his remarks in tone seem to be sarcastic. So I can see from the dialogue between Christ and the, the people at the temple why it was hard for them to believe. How deep is your belief in uh, the good Lord? And Jesus Christ, well, my mother's Jewish, but father's Catholic guy. Give me that old-time religion, that old-time religion, that old-time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for my daddy. It was good for my mammy. Give me that old-time religion. It's good enough for me. I just believe in Jesus Christ and the answer to life. Um, but I certainly believe in the great days of King David, the great days of Moses, and the great days of, uh, of Jacob and all the rest. I believe that in this day and age, the man is confused with many things and I, I, concerning that, and that takes a deep religious talk, which I guess this film hasn't got the time for. He sang as he watched and waited till his belly boiled. Come the wall, sing the pill, now with me. Richard, you can open up the, the uh, trumpet mic. I might do that. As you desire me, so shall I come to you. But as the prayer says, thy will be done. And no matter how much I like it, the Lord just told me to like it. You see. his blessings not for him I could have been really in trouble but not for, I always pray to him and he always helped me oh, it's true.
the show. Yes, definitely. Three great big shows rolled up in a while. Seeing is believing. We defy you. We challenge you. Can you find your way out of Luna Park's mystic mirror maze? To real is this feeling of make-believe. To real when I feel what my heart can conceal. Oh, yes, <laughs> I'm the great pretender. Each day, before the gates of Luna Park are open to the public, our dedicated staff can be seen working tirelessly in preparation for the day ahead. On the morning of the fire, we decided to, um, to, um... <laughs> watch part of the festival. And while we were standing there, just out of nowhere, a figure appeared. And Damien was rather frightened and rather taken back when he came up to us. But he just stood there and this, this beast-like person put his hand on his shoulder and I just took the photo. The scripture says that toward the last days, there'll be evil spirits more than ever. Uh, we are living, I believe, in the days nearer to the end. minute that we would all still go to Luna Park because we were going home the next day and it was probably about eight o'clock when we arrived at Luna Park at night and um get your tickets for the creepiest spine tingling ride of your life on the ghost train we dare you to ride on the ghost train <laughs> We'd only had about four tickets left, and we asked the children which ride they enjoyed the most. And they chose the ghost train. Yes, there are lots of ghosts in here. You'll shiver and quake, and the ghost train! <laughs> When I bought my ice cream, I walked over to the front of the, the ride and I could see that they'd already got on the ride without me. And I was just standing there eating my ice cream and all of a sudden I saw the smoke and the flames. And Thank you. 
that's feared the death toll could rise to as high as seven in an horrific blaze in Sydney's Lunar Park tonight. Fire broke out in the ghost train and within minutes the building was an inferno. It's been an absolute night of tragedy here at the, at the Lunar Park in North Sydney. I sat with a woman most of the evening who cried, was in tears for more than three hours before she learned that her two children aged four and six were dead and her 29-year-old husband had also perished in this inferno. It's tragic. I knew that John and the children were in there. And at that stage, I just lost all control and they put me in an ambulance. Because I was, I was in so much shock, I had what some people might say is a death experience. And I could see into a a big black tunnel, and at the other end of that tunnel was this beautiful white light and the image of Jesus in a gown and his long hair. And he was saying to me, it's not your turn yet. You go back, you go back. And this seemed to go on for hours. The child was created to the slaughterhouse he's led. So good to be alive when a eulogy the worship of the dead as a cycle of the sacrifice talking of God's son God and his son the name is so similar to the family who perished. They were the heroes, they were the soldiers of sacrificial lambs. Although an electrical fault is believed to have triggered the blaze, police, fire, and Department of Labor and Industry officials were on the site once again today, sifting through the ruins. Many questions surrounding the tragic fire still remain unanswered. We're now satisfied that the fire was as a result of an electrical fault within the building. By far the most dramatic claim of the day came from Dr. Anthony Stokes, senior lecturer in electrical engineering at Sydney University. In his opinion, there has been no material evidence found yet that prompts him to conclude that electrical failure was responsible for starting the Lunar Park fire on June 9th. I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start. We'd always, the artists of us who worked here uh, were always friends of Lunar Park, but officially we formed after the fire because we thought this was uh, going to be the end of the place. <laughs> I want to learn a park to open again. And I just like to tell all the kids out there, come and help us. We've well, got to sort of save it because it's one of the best playgrounds in anywhere. But wouldn't this be a better site for a casino or something like that? It might be for an adult, but not for a child. This is a particular item, the river caves, that can be fixed and made safe. And uh, it would just be criminal to bulldoze it. Criminal. The wood has just gone up. Right for it there.
thought that everyone, after what happened to those kids in the middle of the year of the child, and especially the, the man's name being John God's son, and uh, been in a full moon, death striking, where man has mocked death, etc. So there's a big lesson to be learned from it. I hope I learned my lesson from it. Lot number 37. Noah's Ark, a fine piece there, 100, 100. Memories of Luna Park. Sorry, I feel a bit much. gentlemen, boys and girls, your safety is most important to us. So please do not rock the boat and never ever place your hands outside the boat. Thank you and enjoy your trip. <laughs> today who are here that night, old timers who I've talked to, and they're feeling very bad about it because they were all told to shut up and there was rumours of five bikies came in here and torched the place. Uh, the police covered it up. Uh, now, um, what what's that mean? Uh, clothes are not what makes the man, rather it's the heart and soul. What dwells inside what counts, not on the outside appearances. See, Satan in this world has an army that appear like angels. You know, be not deceived by appearances, you know. <laughs> it's up into the willows, sadly they sigh. It's the wind in the willows saying goodbye. The sound of your laughter vainly I long only the breeze whispers their song they are murmuring never never the same you have vanished forever gone as you came like a dream you have faded, died like a flame. But the wind in the willow whispers your name. Yes, I can't forget the wonderful times I've had here at Luna Park. And the wind in the willows whispers the name of this great place, no matter where one goes, to those who've known it. Do you think that that, that, that the, had the ghost train not burnt down, that the, that the park would be still open now? I'm sure it would be. I'm sure it would be. Uh, I'm not going to be political, so turn that off. It's now believed a witness has sworn a statement alleging the blaze was started by a group of bikies working for a well-known mobster who was trying to gain control of the park. A long-time friend of Luna Park, Sydney artist Martin Sharp, agrees that there has been a cover-up. He says police told him so at the time, saying they were powerless to act because their hands were tied. Do you think uh, justice will ultimately be done? Uh, ultimately, justice is always done. <laughs> Agree. The man.
matters change, and with it me. <laughs> can tear it apart and the bells wear that bell sweetly ring of the joys you will bring when love ship anchors safe in my heart every time i look into that holy book here i want to tremble when i think about the park and the carpenter near the temple comes from here, from the scriptures. Now, it's very easily stated hundreds of years ago, which still applies today. In chapter 6, the ninth verse of the first book of Corinthians, don't you know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? <laughs> don't be deceived. No fornicators, no idolaters, no adulterers, no effeminate, no abusers of themselves of, with mankind, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. But you are like that. All of us are filled with error. But now you have found Jesus Christ. You've put on the new body. And you are born again. So look at all the works in strange ways. in the scriptures are those correct truths which never change in this world or the world to come. Someday my love will guide you. Someday. 
just the same. And as the song says, it's a lovely day tomorrow. There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover tomorrow. Just you wait and see.
Come from the land down under 